So welcome along the Friday report then all about broadband and communication on the Isle of Wight today and joining me in the studio John Irvine who's the CEO of White Fibre and Tom Honeyman Brown I do apologise for getting your name wrong right at the start there that's, that's not a good right. start um, but Tom you're from the cow company in Tatnall Farm welcome to the studio both Thank of you, you. Um, so first off then uh, what I want to to talk to you about really I mean you know I, and I come at this from a fairly uninitiated point of view as far as I'm concerned broadband to me is about how fast my kids can get on the uh, the Moshi Monsters website or whatever it is they want to get onto and play uh, or, or whether I can uh, you know download something on, on Netflix as, as quickly as I might like to and that's basically as far as I get with it um, so uh, first off uh, tell me about broadband in business what does it do what does it mean how does it affect businesses on the Isle of Wight I think broadband has become like gas electricity running water it's an essential utility so who would dream of of running a business or buying a house without running water these days broadband has become such an essential utility for doing so many things almost anything you want to do in business requires you to be connected to other businesses and you get that connectivity through your broadband connection whether that's um, placing an order you know, for some toilet rolls with beta pack, uh, or making a restaurant reservation at uh, Tapnell Farm, um, or paying your council tax to uh, the council. It all needs a broadband connection, so it's no longer something that's a nice to have, it's no longer a luxury, it's absolutely essential. And it's a lot, I mean, it's very difficult trying to explain to people who, uh, you know, who, who haven't had the internet in their lives what it was like without the internet and without that, that access to the net, without the, the, the dial-up connection and, and all that kind of stuff. But there are people who, for whom it isn't as important as others. So, for example, um, obviously you guys provide the, the, the broadband to keep Isle of Wight Radio on air, but we are a massively data hungry industry everything we do relies very heavily on the speed of our broadband we are very very data hungry but in no way i'm sure is that comparable to if you run a, a cafe in newport where you are simply using it for m maybe a bit of cash register maybe there's a little amount of ordering in there um you you know the isn't there a point at which, as long as you've got it, it doesn't matter really how fast it is or, or, or what the service is like, as long as you've got it there? I think there's two answers to that question. One is <coughs> how fast it runs certainly has an effect on um, what you can do with it. Um, but reliability is an important component as well. So, you know, that little cafe is highly dependent on its broadband connection if, if its customers want to pay by credit card it's going to get far more customers coming in, staying longer, spending more, if it has good Wi-Fi to give them uh, to use whilst they're there. So yes, there's a question of relativity here, for sure. Um, a solid, fast broadband connection is more important to Isle of Wight Radio than to that cafe, but I wouldn't underestimate the importance of it to that cafe. So there are, I would say there are very few businesses, hardly any, that that could exist today without broadband and yet i'm sure there will be some going do you know what we are quite happy without it we're, we're, we're carrying on regardless i know there will be some there just from the pure amount of people that, well, that listen to Isle of white radio and say well we we you know for example we can't text you right but then the the other way of looking at it is <coughs> you know you, you don't miss what you've never had but until you've had it and until you've experienced it and until you've seen the real productivity benefits it can bring to your business you, you, you know you don't know what you've never had and you know one of uh, white fibers biggest challenges on the island in selling our fastest speeds is until you've actually experienced it you don't know what you're missing and you know the simplest um, example of that is when you sit down and try and watch a movie on Netflix or something on BBC iPlayer 
many people on the island are accustomed to that little buffering signal sitting and running for, you know, five seconds, ten seconds, sometimes thirty seconds or a minute. With a good broadband connection, you literally will barely see that spinning wheel. It, it, in, in a lot of cases, it won't even appear. And so people who've never experienced that don't know that actually they can dispense with it. But you know what? I don't know if it bothers me that much that I'd want to dispense with it in the first place. Or is that just me, maybe? I don't know if I care that no I I enough to, to, to warrant sort of, uh, a, you know, a lot of upheaval. It kind of does what I need it to do. Um, I don't know what upheaval is involved in upgrading your broadband connection. It's about getting uh, good value for money and getting the service that, that you're paying for. Why pay for a service that runs slow when you can have one? For the same price that, that runs fast or faster. The, the reason we're having this discussion is, is the argument has been, hasn't it, over over what constitutes really fast broadband, and there's a there's a disparity between what what the EU wants and, and, and what Britain's delivering, and, and what's actually being delivered. Tell me a little bit about um, the, the background to that, and and what that argument sort of centres on. I think there's a huge disparity between what the Isle of Wight Council's rural broadband project has delivered and, and what is super fast. So the word super fast has disappeared completely <coughs> from the council's vocabulary. When they launched the rural broadband project in 2013, it was promising to deliver super fast broadband to 98% of the island. The council's latest statements, the council's latest uh, press releases, you will not find the word super fast. They simply say faster. So even I, a white fiber, will not dispute that the council's project has delivered faster broadband, but it is far from super fast. Far from super fast. And that's where that's what I'm trying to get at, really. Is so. What's that difference between fast and super fast? What is the what's the key difference? In technical terms, the European Union defines super fast as 30 megs per second or faster. Uh, the UK government, as a little bit of a fudge to BT, defined super fast as 24 meg or faster. <coughs> so what that means is the council's rural broadband project hasn't even delivered 24 megs per second. If they're if they're shy of using the word super fast in their own press releases, it's not super fast. So here's the thing. I'm somebody who, um, you know, I can't really tell the difference between uh, something on Blu-ray, for example, and something on HD and something on, uh, you know, a good quality DVD. Is that, to me. Why, you, is that why you work in radio, then? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, they all look the same. It, they all look the same. There's only so many wrinkles on Tom Cruise's face, for example, that I might want to see. You can tell the difference between a 64 bit rate and a 128 or a 340 on audio. It's exactly the same thing. And is that what we're talking about here? So if you're a user of broadband, what difference would you see with this sort of super fast broadband versus faster? Um, the ability in the first instance to truly stream HD or the latest Ultra HD, 4K TV as it's also known, that happens fairly instantaneously on a super fast broadband connection. Ultra HD wouldn't happen at all on, a, on a, a, a broadband connection that's not super fast. So there are really tangible differences uh, from a, a, a consumer, someone sitting at home at night wanting to watch TV. Um, beyond that, the biggest difference really is about the number of people that you have seeking to use that broadband all at the same time. So at home, so your children sound like they're quite young at the moment, I promise you, mine are, I've got three teenagers, <laughs> uh, I promise you when they're teenagers they will be consuming your broadband much more heavily. And the same in a business, so if you're a business of, of two or three people, will you get by on a, on a, on a slower 8 to 12 meg um, broadband connection? Yes, depending uh, on what you're doing, but if you have 5, 10, 15 people um, in your office, or you're running a restaurant that, that peaks at with 100 people, uh, 20 of whom want to be accessing the Wi-Fi, you certainly need super fast.
Okay, all right. So maybe you've got some experience of this. Maybe you uh, you, you have a company on the Isle of Wight, and and maybe you're at the larger end of the scale there, and you do find that your your broadband's a bit too slow, and it's not really working for you. Maybe at the other end of the scale, you know, there is only a couple of you, but maybe you're expanding. We would love to hear your experiences. Send me a text at iWhite Radio hashtag. Friday report, or you could tweet uh, IW Space New Message. Send it in to eight one triple two. And let me bring uh, Tom in here. Tom, you're from the Cow Company in, in Tatnall Farm, and to say that you have expanded would be slightly an understatement over the last uh, well under a year, really. Um, t- tell me about that expansion and how crucial broadband has been in that. The, the you're right. The expansion has been has has been great. We started off five years ago with uh, with with Tom's Eco Lodges, uh, a glamping uh, setup run by my my brother-in-law, um, and it, it's grown from strength to strength really. And last year we put in a new new restaurant, the Cow Company, um, specialising in in beef and dairy, um, and that was that that proved popular. People people have enjoyed the experience. So so based on that that appetite and the the, the growth there. Uh, this year we're expanding into a, a farm park and in summer half term we launch uh, Tatnall Farm Park I- in earnest. And really the, you know, the, the, the experience of ours w- with broadband, broadband for us provides th- the backbone of everything we do. The customers don't notice it necessarily, but when they're checking their phone sort of absentmindedly or, or when they're just checking in with their Facebook or doing whatever, they don't realise that, that that structure is there and that that backbone is there, but but it, the the duty is is on us to provide it. It's not only with our customers; it's it's with our our whole our office, the infrastructure of of what we do there. You know, lots of what we do is hosted on the cloud. To access the cloud, we need super fast broadband. We don't want to be we don't want our, our team to be sat downloading stuff for hours in front of their desk, waiting for the next document to be available to them. Um, as well as you know, accounting packages and, and everything that goes into making a business function is heavily dependent on, on the internet and on, on quick broadband. But when our customers come, they need to be able to pay. They need to be able to pay quickly. If the credit card machines hold them up, a queue uh, is created. Um, if someone's in their in their glamping tent trying to download a movie, it needs to happen quick. Now, should they be in a glamping tent downloading movies? Should they not be out, you know, communing with nature and looking at the stars? If they can do either, it is <laughs> it is not on us to tell them what they need to be doing. Uh, but everyone needs a break every now and again. And if John's teenagers want to sit and download a movie so he can get a break and have a glass of white wine in front of his tent, then then <laughs> we're big supporters of that. Try try tell, try telling them they can't download a movie. <laughs> So yeah, so it's 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 about every, it, it's everything we do basically, um, and you know when customers come to us, we we deal with lots of visitors from the from the mainland as well as loads of loads of locals, um, and visitors from the mainland, you know, arguably the services over there are better. Super fast broadband has has reached further. The infrastructure it, it is more mature than it is on the island, uh, so the expectations from them are higher. So as a result, it's it's. It's really important that when they come to the Isle of Wight, they don't experience a service which isn't as good as what they're used to. It's not a great advertisement, so so we need to work hard as a as a community, as a rural community, to ensure that that we keep up with the pace. Do you feel that um, you know businesses like yours? You're you're almost taking on the uh, the the mantle of what maybe the the mobile providers are already providing so for example there's this push to get 4g um you're out and about uh you've got 4g so you can download stuff and you can you can have access to stuff and and i as a a, you know as the owner of the mobile phone i have to pay for that through my contract or through pay as you go or whatever Mm. um does it sort of frustrate you as a business that you're taking on some of that 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 you feel you have to provide that that free when actually i could probably be doing it on my mobile through a 4G signal. Um, it's 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 part of the package, really, for us. You know, we want to give the best service we can to everyone that comes to Tatnall Farm. Um, um, whether that's you know whether whether that's giving them great food in in the restaurant, nice cup of coffee in the cafe. Um, you know the views we haven't put on, but we're lucky enough to have them there. <laughs> Are they, you're not claiming you know, those. No, we can't claim the views. We can't claim the views. So you know the the onus is on us to do everything we can to provide an amazing service and to provide an amazing environment. 
unluckily for us you know we're not in the middle of London so the 4G signal is not great it's patchy at best but we're you know we, we, we can step in and we can give a we can give a great um, a great broadband service even even where you have 4G it still costs money so using your 4G data even when you have it is 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 not the method of choice for for accessing broadband fine for doing your Facebook uh, and uh, and and things like that but watching videos you'll soon eat through your allowance very quickly which is why families uh, and, and and youngsters uh, look for a Wi-Fi signal wherever they can get it but that's almost I mean that's kind of almost uh, uh, what I mean really and I know that areas of, of you know the island are extremely patchy when it comes to mobile reception but um, th there seems to be this sense of uh, uh, you know that the businesses have to take on the load of you know, my child watching a, a, a film while I'm trying to eat lunch out and about. Um, whereas, you know, kind of as, a, as a, a consumer of a mobile phone, you know, maybe you could be arguing, well, actually, do you know what? If you want to sit there and, and, and watch a film instead of having brought a book or brought some colouring or let your kids run around outside, then maybe you should be paying for that and not my business. Doesn't it sort of eat away at the, the profits maybe unnecessarily to provide that extra layer for customers? We, we we don't take that view. No, I mean we, you know, we're in the hospitality business, and and uh, you know it, the onus is on us to provide the best hospitality that we can. Broadband's another piece of that jigsaw. Okay, all right. So tell me, if you will, then, um, about that trouble with providing that in a rural area. Obviously, the Isle of Wight is I extremely rural, and, mm. and we've talked a little bit about the, the problem with mobile phones. You go to a, a certain part of the Isle of Wight, you get French radio drifting across, so we know that, that there are communication problems in parts of the Isle of Wight that people are dealing with. How does that then sort of play out when you're, when you're trying to provide this, this super-fast broadband or, or broadband that's fast at all? Uh, I think I'll, I'll refer back to the, the Isle of Wight Council's Rural Broadband Project. So that project was aimed at solving this issue. And what we're finding now that the project is complete um, is that it hasn't solved the issue. And, it, and that's because it is very expensive to dig up roads, to lay new cable uh, and to reach... Um, you know more remote um, buildings more re more remote locations so the the solution that white fiber has come up with is using high speed wireless technology which works um, very well it 's much more cost effective to deploy and and is in fact the technology that 's in use at at Tapnell farm so Tapnell farm is is connected to the outside world via a, a high speed radio connection that delivers high-speed internet into that site and then distributes it around the site using Wi-Fi. Works well, customers aren't complaining, and, and that technology is getting better uh, every year. Let me just um, ask you there, you said that project's complete to, to, via Isle of Wight Council. Um, just explain what you mean there. Well, the, the project was scheduled to be complete by last September. It ran a little bit late. The council issued a, a press release in December saying we're almost done, 18,600 of the 20,000 premises due to be connected to the project are connected and the remainder will be connected by early 2016. Well, here we are, early to mid 2016, one assumes the project is complete. Except it, it isn't, of course. We've got um, a, a statement that uh, Shirley, uh, Shirley Smart has uh, put out here, Executive Member for Economy and Tourism. And she says, with, that, with any project of this type, there are some cabinets that have become snagged in their delivery within the project. The project is due to complete its main implementation phases by October and will, by that time, have enabled access to over 19,000 premises in the project intervention area. So work ongoing. Um, I think if, Is that you an old date, statement? if you look at the date on that, it's dated 2013, 2014. So you're expecting it done? It, it's, it's done. Uh, go look on the um, Isle of Wight Council's website. So uh, presumably by, by what you're saying then, not done to, to the, the way that, that you would want it? Well, it has delivered faster broadband using the council's own terminology it hasn't delivered super fast broadband <coughs> 
All right, so um, Tom, I mean, in terms of your your own ruralness, mm. and obviously, um, you know, you guys will go out and talk to other business owners, and other business owners will have um, a, a take on this in terms of the West White, particularly, because I think that's what we're talking about here, isn't it? That that great swathe. Um, I mean, again, you can see why your business would need it. Mm. Have you spoken to people who? Um, Maybe they've got a smaller business. They just they just don't need it in the same way. A lot of businesses on the Isle of Wight are SMEs. Maybe don't have that reliance on it in the same way, it, quite as much as you do. Well, I mean, in, talk, in terms of talking to other business owners, what's what's the take there? Uh, you, you may you may be right. Uh, uh, arguably, they they wouldn't need as much connectivity. Maybe not as you know uh, uh, as frequently as we do. But the cost of you know the cost of having super fast broadband shouldn't be any different to the cost of having regular broadband necessarily as an end consumer. So you know the cost to transition up to that next level of speed should be there. So yeah, the requirements the requirements may well be less, but there's no reason a one man you know a, a one man band working out of home shouldn't have the same the, the same speed of broadband as a as a, a a much larger business operating in exactly the same area i mean we are you know we, we are rural you know there's no getting away from it the the, the bt superfast broadband hasn't made its way to us so if we didn't have if we didn't have have john and uh, and white fiber then uh, we would be operating on a regular bt dial up and it, it it wouldn't be good enough. It would hold us back quite considerably. And I do think I think Tatnall Farm is is typical. I think I don't agree with you at all that a small business is less reliant on broadband than um, than others. You know, the Federation of Small Business produced its own report. Uh, sorry, the Country Landowners Association produced its own report um, just a few months ago, and top of their list of uh, activities required to support rural businesses is universal service for broadband and mobile. It's top of the list. So, you know, they're saying that um, broadband is important for all businesses, not just larger businesses. Well, it's not about what I think. It's about what you think, really. So let me know. Um, text me, if you will. IW, a space in your message. Send it in to 81222. How important is it? We've talked on this show before about the importance of uh, social media, for example, and periscoping and Facebook and, uh, and Twitter and, and how they play a part.